everybody, so Danella with Danella Stitchery here. So today we are going to work on the snail trail block. And I have all my pieces already cut out and everything. And I'll give you the sizes of each piece as I go. As I did design this in my EQ8 program. But today's block for this week's tutorial, week three, is the courthouse steps of the log cabin quilt. And so, and as you can see behind me, I got the snowball block right here. And then right here above my head is the very large snail trail because I didn't like the measurements of the fabrics in the center for the, to make it a six and a half inch block like this one. So I made it twice the size. You could turn, do the pieces however, whatever sizes you want. But this one right here, the snowball, there we go, is six and a half inches. This one, the snail trail, is 13 inches if you're following along with my patterns. And then once I get all the blocks done up, I decided if they don't all fit perfectly, I'm going to add sashing. I don't know how I'm going to lay them out. I don't know if I'm going to lay them out in the order that I make them or what I'm going to do yet. So I'm just toying with different ideas and I'll figure out the layout of how I want to do mine once I get all my blocks done up towards the end of the year. Plus, I'm making one for my other son as well. I'm going to make, I haven't picked out the fabrics for his yet and all, but I'm going to make some ones for his of the same blocks, different fabrics, and a different layout for the for those blocks. So they were there, they got their own, each own individual quilts I designed myself, but in different orientations. His would probably be Mario Brothers because he loves Mario Brothers. He loves a lot of the old retro video games, which is one reason why on YouTube he's called Retro Cam, C-A-R-E-T-R-O-C-A-M. So if you guys want, check him out. I'll leave a link for his channel down in the description below. But anywho, back to the courthouse steps of the log cabin. I already got all my fabrics here all picked out and everything. I was initially doing this by my own stash. However, I have decided to um, buy a few other pieces because the log cabin quilt requires more than just two pieces of fabric. And I didn't think it would look right with just the two of uh, the initial two, which is this one here and the solid black. So I bought another type of gray that is also Nightmare Before Christmas. The little creepy guys, creepy kids. And then some purple and black Jack Skellington fabric. So I thought that would be good to stick with the same theme, but different colors. So first thing we're going to do is start off with our middle piece here. That is the letter E. And it, for the time being, we are going to move our B's, our A, see, we'll put our A down, then our B on top of that, then our C's, because that's the orientation we're going to go. So first we're going to start with our E, which is the center square. That one there is two and a half by two and a half. So I'm taking my label off of that. And then our D which is one and a half inch by two and a half inch. So it's one and a half wide by two and a half long. And for this, we're gonna do one on the top and one on the bottom. So that way there, it'll line up like this. So we're gonna try so this flip this one over, so it's here, and then flip this one over, and so that's there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them just like that, bring it over here and do my stitching. I am using a cream color thread, as you could probably see, or you may not be able to see because of the light and all, but I'll just so that way there, it makes it easier for you guys to actually see my um, threads and my stitches. I'm using a quarter inch seam right along the long edge.
trimming my threads. And these I'm going to press towards the center piece. Now I'll fit this over here. They're whether they're on opposite sides of each other. Don't forget you can use leaders and enders. And the only reason why I'm um, doing this towards the center piece is just because that fabric is thinner than the outer pieces so that way there it makes the seam lay a little bit nicer. Plus that's the way the direction that the fabric wants to go anyway so it works out. And there we go. So now we are going to take our C pieces, C blocks, which we have, you'll need for the C, you will need two other fabrics that I just want to go out here and two, oh, sorry, my bad. So two of the fabrics that's going to go out here and two of the ones that are going to go inside of here. And though the C's are 1.5 inches by 4.5 inches. So you need two of whatever color is going to go with this one and two of whatever color is going to go with this one. And you will try not to do the exact same fabrics on each one. But if you do, you do. It's however you want to do it. Quilter's choice. And mine are slightly off, and that could just be cutting error. It could be human error, whatever. I'm not really for sure, but if you've got a little bit of an overlay, that is okay. I'm going to always trim up in between or do like me and just use it as a little extra umph in the center whenever you're doing these. Now, I'm just pushing this open and... Finger pressing. If you've ever seen me on my live stream, you know I love, I prefer finger pressing for a lot of things. And then just using the iron at the end. Unless I'm off camera, then I'll do more, use the iron in between each one. But for my videos purposes, I like to get to the next step a little quicker. Which could sometimes cause me problems. But it's okay. It's all good in the hood. <laughs> so now we got both of those pieces on and I'm just finger pressing a couple of times to make sure it stays nice and flat. Then we're going to put it back over here and we are going to add these two on. Now I'm going to flip this one around that way that everything lays the same direction. And as you see, I have a little bit of an overhang on each end and that's okay that is completely okay it is most likely just due to the fact that i had i did not press my fabric before i cut it and i would suggest doing that just it was for the most part flat so i wasn't stressing over it And then we're going to bring this one over here. Make sure all my fabric of the main piece is all covered up. And then we're going to finger press that. So tell me down in the description below, if you are following along with me on this, what uh, design are you using as far as like what colors, what color fabrics or what theme of fabrics are you do using along with yours this time? 
So next we are going to try to add on our other our next block, which is the B blocks. And our B blocks measure one and a half by six and a half. And as you see now I'm going back to my purple and my original gray black skeleton. So that way there I can keep keep it swapping around when I need to. So I am going to flip this over this way, add that on here, do a quarter inch seam here, as well as over on this side. You want to do you want to do one side first and then do the other side every single time. So for now, I'm going to put this one back over here so I can do this one first. Put that out of my way. Then we're going to come over here with a purple and get that one lined up just perfectly and get it sewn on. All right, so now we're going to put this back over here like this, and we're going to add on Jack the original Jack Skellington fabric to this. And yes, I understand that this here is way busier than what you guys would ever see me probably do as far as the fabrics all together. Usually, I will try and do a lot of solids in with a print, but... I decided to put myself out there a little bit, go out of my comfort zone. I'm like, why not? I was feeling really enthusiastic and creative on this and decided I'm going to go out of my comfort zone by doing more print than what I do solids on this. I'm like, it'll make it fun and like a little, been getting into like the whole I spy thing lately. The Scrappy I Spy. Now nah, I'm not going to be doing this all, in the top, all the time on mine or anything. It's just, I've been really, really playing with a bunch of different things that are not my normal lately. So as far as with my quilting goes, and I'm really enjoying it. But just like, just letting the creative juices flow. So this is what we got so far. Now we only got two more pieces left to add on, and that would be our A, um, our fabric A, which is going to be on the two outside pieces here. And then we'll square it. What we would do is we would square it up to the six and a half inch block that it would need to be. So we are going to add on these two. And this, because of this being a Kona cotton solid, and I can't really tell the difference between the two sides, on which way it's the right side and which way it's the wrong, 
wrong side, then it doesn't really matter too much. It is what it is. If I can't tell by looking close up at it, then no one else can tell either. And if they can, they're too close to my quilt. Because there is no quilt police here. Now, this is the, now I'm going to do a quick slight trim up over here. As I move all my fabrics up, so I'm cutting these out out of the way. Probably should grab my bigger ruler, but that's okay. Okay, so this block here should be coming out to be roughly about seven inches by seven inches, or seven and a half by seven and a half, based upon what I am looking at right here. Let's see. I'm going to get a different ruler, my square ruler over here. Should have had this ready, but I didn't. So it is what it is. Sorry about that. So, I got my large squaring ruler. I'm going to square this up. I know that my centerpiece here is completed square after all four seams have been sewn on. It is two inches by two inches. So I want that to be right in the center. Without me squaring this up, it is currently a messy size. Let me square up these edges some a little bit, just so I can be able to I do need to change the blade on my cutter, but it is what it is. It's not my normal one I use. I cannot locate my normal one in a hurry this afternoon. All right, so we are going to square this up to be seven and a half by seven and a half. I just got a little bit more to trim. And all done. So this is our finished block. Isn't that super cute? 
So we have all of our gorgeous Nightmare Before Christmas fabrics. And this winds up being seven and a half by seven and a half inches. Um, and once again, our center is two and a half by two and a half. The top and the bottom, that's two pieces. The letter D is one and a half by two and a half. After that, we have all four of these pieces, the two blacks and the top and bottom. Second row is letter C, one and a half by four and a half. Then we have B, that is um, one and a half by six and a half. And then we have the two letter A's, which are the two outside black pieces that are one and a half by six and a half. So just follow along with what I said in the as we went and everything, and you should be all good. It should come out to be about seven and a half inches, which is what mine was. And the only thing I was really actually cutting off is just these tiny little scrappy pieces here just to square it up nicely. So not very much waste at all on this. And I bought a yard of fabric of this beautiful purple and of this cute little fabric right here. And I have used next to nothing of it for this. Just a couple of little strips that I've cut off. So... Have fun. Play with the fabrics. Let me know in the comments what fabrics uh, theme or colors or whatnot that you are using for your pattern if you're sewing along with me on this. I'd be really interested to see what you're doing. And also, this past Saturday, what, or no, yesterday, Wednesday, April 10th, was my birthday. Don't forget. You have until this Friday at midnight, which is April the 12th. Tomorrow night at midnight is the end of the giveaway and everything where all you got to do is email me your name, address, and your favorite color. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to do a giveaway of a drawing on this Saturday on my live stream announcing the winner of a really of some fabric that I'm going to send them. Not for sure just what yet you'll have to tune in on Saturday to see if you won as well as what you won, but it will be fabric that I'll be sending out to you. And this is my way of showing my appreciation for all my subscribers on my channel. And that is um for all of my especially for all my replay watchers cuz I lo I love all my watchers. So Make sure you come over, check out my replays, and I'll leave a link in the description for the playlist of the first two videos that I've done. And if you're going to enter the giveaway, make sure you send me an email. My email is in the description link below. And send me an email of your name, your address, and your favorite color. So that way there I can coordinate the fabrics to your favorite color. And that would need to be submitted to me by Friday, April 12th of 2024 at midnight. If I don't have it by then, you will not be entered into the giveaway. So everybody have a wonderful evening or day or whatever morning or whatever it is that you're when you were watching this. Bye.